Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 891st Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Just to say, I've got an absolute cracking battle for you today. And as you can see, this has been fought on one of our new custom maps. So if you bring Barbarian Troops, look, you're going to get the Woods bonus on this custom map. Um, as I say, we like playing on the new custom maps because uh, it kind of adds something uh, to the games. Like, and you can see this map has also got undulating ground as well. Okay. I'm guessing most of the teams there will try and go for that higher, this higher part of the ground there, possibly. As you can see, definitely higher there. And as I say, you can fight out in the big open plains here if you want. Or, as I said, you could uh, bring barbarian troops and hide them in the woods and, and try and get your um, enemies to attack you in the woods so that you get the woods bonus there. So, um, as I say, undulating ground, woods if you want to fight in the woods, or big open plains if you want to fight in the open plains. So, uh, this map's pretty good. And our first teammate is someone who's called himself OTD Chimrizig, but is in fact Scorpion King SR. Now, get ready for this. He's got 17, yes, 17 infantry units and just three cavalry. So, you imagine the firepower that he's got there with 17 infantry units just like to show you here he's also got a morale boosting unit there an eagle unit which uh, as i say is a morale boosting unit as well has his infantry general morale bonus as well so they have already got two lots of morale bonus going on there for his 17 infantry and of course his cavalry will be hiding in the woods there okay so as i say 17 infantry that's a lot of firepower he can bring to the battlefield there Okay, our next teammate is a Brotherhood member, Barky Man, with his faction of choice, Carthage. Now, he's got 17, yes, 17 Sacred Band Spearmen and just three cavalry. So he's actually mirrored the infantry number of Scorpion King. They've both got 17 infantry units. If we have a look at the upgrades of... Um, Barkley Man's uh, Sacred Band Spearman. You'll see that some of his units have got eight upgrades on. They were two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Okay, others of his Sacred Band units will just have seven upgrades on. One experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. Um, and then he's got an infantry unit here you don't often see there, and that's the Pawnee or Pony infantry, depends on how you pronounce it there. Um, they're cheap um, air infantry. Um, he'll probably use that, I would have thought, for a pilot shield unit, but they're still anti-cavalry because, of course, they're carrying spears. Anything with a spear or a pike is anti-cavalry. But other units that have his sacred band uh, troops are like six upgrades, gold shield, gold attack. So he's certainly got mixed upgrades through his army there. And there you are. He's got a general bodyguard um, cavalry unit there so that'll have two hit points and be very fast moving you'll be able to move that around the battlefield hitting a vulnerable targets like enemy archers and things like that so that will be a tried and tested Carthage army of Barclay Mans there our next teammate is a Brotherhood member Schemer now Schemer's got 14 infantry two auxiliary infantry and a four cavalry okay and you're going to see some sneaky tactics from him during the course of the battle. Can you see that he's got an eagle unit there? Two eagle units, so he's got two extra morale boosting um, units there, as well as his infantry general. Okay, so there you go. They've got three morale boosting units there within his infantry. Okay, and then as you can see here, you'll see... That I think some of his infantry have got seven upgrades on an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack okay but the the majority of his infantry if I'm not mistaken are just gold shield gold attack there you go I think that's the majority of them gold shield gold attack but they've got those three morale boosting units and here are the light auxiliary missile troops there if we look a bit closely you can see they throw pilers there and as long as they hold their ground and don't run off, they can soak up enemy pilots as good as any other unit. And as you can see, he's got them as his pilot shield units there. So, but as I say, watch out for Schemer a bit later on in the battle. A bit sneaky. Right. And here you can see that his cavalry have got seven upgrades on an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack. So that will be one of Schemer's tried and tested armies. And our last teammate is myself, Spartan Commander. I've got uh, 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. Um, but amongst my infantry, I've got a couple of eagle units to give a bit of morale and boost to my infantry as well there. 
So there's our team. It's got the potential to be an absolute cracking close battle. And here is the other team. We have Brotherhood member Man 2, who has bought an unusual Germanic army. Get ready for this. He's got 12 chosen axemen, 6 cavalry, and 1 screeching woman. Let's have a closer look at his Germanic army here. And you see he's got chosen axemen. And remember these guys have got excellent morale, like urban cohorts, and they've got effective against armor axes that can cut wide swathes through heavily armored troops like Roman infantry. So no, make no mistake, these guys are really tough. Now let's have a look at the upgrades. Oh my gosh, count the upgrades. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fully upgraded chosen axemen. Three experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Oh my gosh. And like I say, they've got the same morale as urban cohort, um, excellent morale. And with those effective against armor axes, they could be a real problem. And of course, barbarian troops, as we know, have not got very good morale. So to bring morale boosting units is a good tactical move. And that's why Man 2's bought a unit of screeching women because they are morale a morale boosting unit. Okay, so they will be giving um, extra morale to the Germanic um, troops there. But as I say, the Chosen Axemen have got excellent morale already, so having extra morale from a Screeching Woman unit is even better. I'm thinking that he's probably only got gold shield. Yeah, just gold shield, gold attack on his Gothic, on his, on his elite Gothic cavalry. Just gold shield, gold attack, because of course he spent all his money on his Axemen there. Notice anything missing from this Germanic army though? Okay, veterans I know will notice straight away. Anything that you've noticed there missing. Of course, his troops are hiding in the woods. But if you notice, he's got no berserkers. Now, the berserkers are arguably the most powerful units in the game. Okay, but he's decided not to have any berserkers in his Germanic army. Now, will he regret that as the battle unfolds? Or will those 12 maximum upgraded chosen axemen do the job that he wants? Well, I guess we just have to see as the battle unfolds. Okay, uh, their next teammate is um, Brotherhood member Fesson. Now, Fesson's got 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. I think he probably 7 upgrades. Let's see, 1, 2, three. Yep, he's got 7 upgrades. An experienced stroke, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. Okay, so that's a pretty solid army there. Uh, their next teammate is Brotherhood member Canary. We don't see Canary very often, so it's nice to see him back on the battlefield. Now, he's got 15 infantry and 5 cavalry. Okay, but he's got an unusual army here because he is including in his, in his army one eagle unit there, a, a morale boost and eagle unit, another morale boost and eagle unit there as well. So that's two morale boosting um, units that he's got, plus his infantry general as well there so he's actually got three morale boosting units within his infantry and that's a really good thing keep his troops fighting longer and of course his five cavalry are hiding in the woods so as i say nice to see canary back on rome total war and their last teammate is brotherhood member of pompey now pompey's got 14 pikes and six cavalry okay 14 pikes and six cavalry i'm guessing he's probably got um, staggered upgrades or mixed upgrades through his battle formation there okay so you can see that his forward units just got gold shield gold attack on them they're going to take the pilots make first contact with the enemy so they're going to suffer a lot of casualties so i'm guessing he's thinking he's not going to spend a lot of money on them um, but our troops have still got to fight down the length of those pikes to kill the man on the other end so uh, that's no tall order for um it's going to be a bit difficult for the Roman troops, I think, there. And as I say there, as we move back further into his battle formation, now you'll notice that his um, pikemen have still just got gold shield, gold attack on. Surely a bit further back in the battle formation, they'll be better upgrade. Oh, no. Still just gold shield, gold attack on his Macedonian pikemen. We know the optimum upgrades on Macedon Macedonian royal pikemen are eight. Two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So I think he spent his money on his... Yes on his companion cavalry. Eight upgrades, two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Remember, sometimes these guys are called the winged horsemen because of those wings on their helmets, but also remember, these guys have got a massive nine charge bonus. Remember, the charge bonus is the impact and penetration that a unit can do. Most cavalry in this game, I believe, have got six charge bonus. They've got a nine charge bonus, especially with those massive upgrades as well. 
So that would be a tried and tested a Macedonian army of Pompey there. But they've certainly got some uh, diversity. Look, uh, Macedon, Rome, Rome and Germania. This should be a cracking battle for you to watch. Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle, we've literally just pressed start. You'll see that Canary and Schemer are trying to get onto that higher part of the map there. Remember we looked at it earlier, this was a slightly higher part of the map. But what I'd like you to notice here is, can you see Schemer has only got seven, I think, urban cohort units and one of those light um, infantry um, units in front of those seven infantry units. Now, what I think he's trying to do here, I think he's trying to kid um, canary in front of him that he's only got seven infantry units there and he's got as I say that light auxiliary unit as his pilot shield units there but I think he's trying to kid canary that he's only got seven infantry units to try and get canary to think oh he's only got seven units I'll attack them and take them out quite quickly I think that's what sneaky schemer is thinking here a good uh, tactical move by the way putting joking aside and remember, Schemer's got 14 infantry units. The rest of his units are hiding in the woods there, you see? And what I think, as I say, Schemer's trying to do here is to try and fool Canary into thinking that that's all he's got. And it wouldn't surprise me if Schemer started to move back towards those woods to try and entice Canary forward. And what he'd like to do then is surprise Canary with all the troops that he's got in the woods. I think that's the... Um, the sneaky tactical thinking here behind schemers uh, there you are look can you see him starting to move back and can you see canary look, moving forward thinking whoa only seven infantry units in front of me you know seven urban cohort units in front of me i can take them out with my 14 infantry units here but uh, as i say look at schemer moving those um those infantry units back towards the woods there can you see canary moving forward here look you can see maybe canary is taking the bait I don't know, but there, can you see Schemer moving his army back into the woods where he's got the bulk of his troops hiding, waiting to surprise Canary if Canary keeps pushing forward there. So uh, that's why I wanted to show you there, a very sneaky um, but a very good tactical move there by Schemer. And will, now will Canary fall for that? Or will Canary just look at Schemer's army and think, I know he's got units hiding somewhere? there and as i say you can see the cavalry there you got to the macedonian cavalry remember those well upgraded macedonian cavalry plus canary's cavalry there as well so they may well be looking to attack schemer we'll just have to wait and see now over here you'll see that scorpion king we know he's one of the most aggressive attacking players in the game now he started off to me to be looking looking to move towards the germanic troops there where he may well have been thinking about throwing some pilots in but now he's seen fesson's flank is beckoning him there and I think that Scorpion King will be looking to crash into Fesson's flank there maybe Barkley man might move forward and try and hold the forward units of Fesson there but he would suffer a lot of pilot damage if he does that while Scorpion King hits him in the flank so I would think probably yeah Barkley man's going to pull his troops away because obviously he would suffer a heck of a lot of damage there right can you see this SBQR cavalry charging bang now, we talk about battlefield awareness a lot in our battle videos there, and I wasn't sure that Fesson was aware that Scorpion King's infantry and cavalry were kind of creeping up on his flank there. And as you can see, I think um, Fesson's lost at least one, maybe two cavalry units there. Okay, on the other flank there, as I say, you can see Canary moving forward, look. but if you notice now, I've brought my green Brutio army forward there to... Um, to try and counter that uh, that Julio army of Canaries. But uh, I might have messed up Schemer's plan there, because maybe if I'd have kept my army out of the way, um, you know, Canary may well have came come on forward there and fallen for the trap that um, Schemer had set, where he could take all his troops out of the woods and attack Canary head on there. So um, don't forget Canary's troops, sorry, um, Schemer's troops are all hiding in the woods there, so... Um, but uh, I put my army there by the side of the, my Carthage ally, so I probably <laughs> I might have messed up Schemer's plan there. Over here, you'll see that Fesson is turning his army to face Scorpion Kings. Now, you'll see here that um, Barkley Man had three of his um, Sacred Band Spear units hiding that he's bought out of the woods here. And look, what he's looking to do is to de defend Scorpion King's flank against that Germanic army there. 
Okay, now we know that um, Germanic um, troops, infantry, will die quite quickly on spears there, and we know that Germanic uh, cavalry, obviously, or any cavalry, will die on spears um, quite quickly as well, because spears and pikes, of course, have got the anti-cavalry bonus. Now, whether the Germanic troops are going to charge into the flank of Scorpion King while Fesson pins and holds him, well, we just have to see. You can see Scorpion King already charging cavalry in. Now, will Barclay Man move his Carthage Sacred Band troops forward there to kind of trap Fesson's Julii army? That'll be an interesting tactical move there to see what uh, what Barclay Man's going to do there. Make no mistake, there'll be a lot of pilot exchanges going on there between um, Scorpion King's SPQR army and Fesson's army there. Now, I think that's a good tactical move for Fesson in pulling back his army there. I think that's a very good good tactical move that he's done that. Now over here you'll see that Schemer has brought his cavalry out of hiding there. As I say, we know a lot of his troops hiding in the woods and he's bringing his cavalry over it, maybe to smash into the flank of Canaria's moving troops. Remember, troops that are caught moving by cavalry can suffer a lot of casualties. And I'm just thinking that's what Schemer's thinking here with his cavalry. There you are, look, looking to charge into the flank of Canaria's moving infantry. And bang! As he smashes in to Canaria's flank there. Uh, as I say, moving infantry will suffer a heck of a lot of damage if they're caught by cavalry. And as you can see, there's at least one of um, Canaria's Julia units has now been routed there. And you can see that Canary brought his cavalry over to counter um, Schemer's cavalry there, but Schemer's moving his cavalry back just in the nick of time there. So well done to him. And don't forget the rest of Schemer's infantry are hiding in the woods there. And uh, I'm guessing he's going to keep them there, keep them fresh, and bring them out when he's ready. There you are. You can see Fesson being very, very aggressive here. Um, what I'm thinking is, I wonder if Fesson's thinking he's going to hold and pin um, our arm is there well the germanic general brings in his troops on the flank i don't know if that's what fesson's thinking here remember fesson's got um i think some good upgrades on his infantry and you can see a lot of pilot exchanging going on there between fesson's army and scorpion king's army there so uh, there you, are. you can see schemers charges cavalry into fesson's army you'll see fesson counter-attacking with his cavalry and then once again, Schemer going to pull his cavalry back just at the right time there. Did the damage he wanted to. Got the full cavalry charge bonus. Pulled his cavalry back. Going to lock and load him there. You'll notice that I brought my cavalry over as well. Got my cavalry in wedge formation. Remember, in wedge formation, you get more penetration and more impact. And I've got my cavalry locked and loaded there. And I'm just getting ready to pull the trigger on this Julii infantry here. Right, you can see once again, Schemer charged his Scipio cavalry in there to cause some casualties. Right, here comes my Brutii cavalry, okay? And I'm aiming for one of the rear units of Fesson's infantry there. So I'm hoping that my cavalry will smash through those engaged Julii um, infantry units. Right, here comes my Brutii cavalry. Get ready for this. Um, bang! As they smash in to those engaged Julio units. Look at the impact and penetration that my cavalry has done there. My green Brutio cavalry. Look at that penetration. Look at the units that that massive cavalry hit um, has just routed there of the enemy troops. Right, pause again for a second here. But if you notice that Macedon has moved some of his pikes forward, remember those Macedonian pikes are anti cavalry. So I don't want anything to do with uh, those pikes with my cavalry. So if you notice here, I've charged in, got the full cavalry charge bonus. Okay, routed loads of enemy Julio troops, and I'm now going to pull my cavalry back. Okay, so um, I think by the looks of it, most of Fesson's infantry has now been routed there through, um, I think, schemers and my cavalry smashing in there. Plus, of course, you've got Scorpion King's infantry fighting as well. So as you can see there, most of Fesson's um, infantry have routed, but I'm guessing that a lot of them will rally. Okay, you can see that. I reckon in that area there, a lot of them will rally and come back into the fray. But um, as I say, um, I think that was a good teamwork attack there on Fesson there, who was being very, very aggressive. There you are. You can see his unit starting to rally now. But he has lost a lot of troops. All his units will be very battle damaged. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's still got his general 
there. Yes, he's still got his general there as well. So he will be um, giving general morale bonus, not just to his troops, but to um, his allies' troops as well. So I thought that was a good move for us. Okay, now over here, as I say, do you remember we said that Schemer was doing a sneaky one over on the flank there, hiding his troops in the woods, and there you already can see them all coming out now. He may well um, attack Canary now with his... Um, with those hidden infantry that he's kept there so they'll all be fresh units so that's good news if you notice here a nice tactical cavalry move here by man two moving his cavalry up behind us and on the higher ground do you notice there he's moved them up onto the higher ground so they will have like a downhill advantage if they charge into us you'll see i've got my cavalry facing them there ready to neutral try and neutralize them if they do attack us but yes, it was a nice, uh, nice tactical move there by Man 2 with his cavalry. Wouldn't surprise me if he moved his infantry around there as well. But here, as I say, you can see we've routed uh, the vast majority of Fesson's army. And now we're facing the, uh, the long pikes of Macedon there. And as I said before, it's uh, quite a tall order for Roman troops to try and fight down the length of uh, those big long pikes of mast on the try and kill the man on the other end. That red Julio unit of Fesson still fighting, which is pretty good. My guess is that Scorpion King's thrown a lot of pilers into those Macedonian units. But over here you'll see um, Schemer with his blue Scipio army doing a left flanking action here. Now it wouldn't surprise me if Canary backed his cavalry off. And of course you've got that well upgraded Macedonian companion cavalry there as well. You'll see Canary splitting his cavalry into two lots. So Schemer needs to be aware of that. Um, because um, Canary could be looking to hit him from two separate directions with his cavalry. Let's pause the game for a second here. So what I think Schemer is looking to do here is possibly get his infantry in behind the enemy troops there. I think that's what he's thinking to do with this... Um, a part of his army obviously he's left the rest of his army over there to hold its place in the battle line against Canary's infantry you can see I've got my infantry there facing uh, Canary's um, infantry as well so um, here you can see and oh and you can see as I said earlier the uh, man too is moving his Germanic axeman round our flank there uh, a nice tactical move there by man too and he's already got his cavalry above us as well you can see here at Scorpion King bringing his SBQR Roman army over to counter um, those Germanic uh, troop movements there. So um, that's a good move there by um, Scorpion King. Here you'll see that Schemer here has moved a lot of his infantry over to this left flank. You'll see that I'm attacking with my green Brutio troops as well here. I'm thinking if Schemer and myself combine here could we take out Canary's army? You can see that red Julio cavalry smashing in to some of Schemer's infantry and bang as they charge in the right. You'll see I'm charging my green Brutio cavalry. Um, what I'm looking to do is hit the flank of some of um, Canary's Julio infantry there. You can see my Brutio cavalry charging in there like a bang as it smashes in there. So as I say, um, this battle was fought approximately two months ago, so I'm just trying to remember the tactics here. But looking here, I would think that both Schemer and myself are trying to take out Canary's army there on our left flank. You can see I'm surging with infantry and cavalry forward there towards um, Canary's infantry. Okay. But over here, as I say, you can see Scorpion King um, looking to attack those Germanic Axemen, but he must be very aware of that Germanic cavalry in behind him there. Okay, he doesn't want to be caught in a hammer and anvil attack. Um, you can see Barkley Man spotted the danger. It looks like he's gonna move three of his spear units up there to try and counter that Germanic cavalry. So a nice bit of teamwork there by um, Barkley Man. And that rock feature there, I think will secure Barkley Man's right flank. I don't think that the Macedonian pikes can get round that uh, right flank through that rock. They're going to have to come all the way around that rock feature if they want to attack his flank. So as I say, that rock is kind of securing um, the Carthage flank there. But as you can see here, both Schemer and myself really aggressively attacking um, Canera's red Julio army there. Okay, you can see that there. And there you are, you can see that Macedonian cavalry with their eight upgrades on and their massive nine charge bonus and with a downhill advantage as well, charging into my infantry. Get ready for this. Ah. Bang! 
as they smash into my green Brutoi infantry. Just look at the impact and penetration of those um, companion cavalry there. Really smashed deep into my infantry. Make no mistake, um, they would have caused my infantry a heck of a lot of um, casualties there. I've got my cavalry in there as well, but that downhill charge bonus, and they've already got a nine charge bonus, and the downhill advantage they got there would have caused my infantry and cavalry a lot of casualties there. So um, um, I think my troops did well to stand as well as they did there against that um, that massive cavalry attack. But as, if, as if you notice here, a lot of Canaries Red Julio infantry has now been taken out um, from what um, Schema and myself have done on our left flank and left centre there. You can see there, um, Pompey using that well upgraded um, companion cavalry there to chase my cavalry off. Uh, my cavalry is extremely battle damaged now as you can see. But uh, here you can see uh, my infantry there facing that uh, potential cavalry attack there. But here now you can see us moving over towards the enemy um, Macedonian units there. There's not a lot of enemy Julio troops left except Fesson's units that have rallied there behind his Macedonian ally. But you can see the Germania Axemen have been brought back from the flank and brought back behind their teammates there. So Mantu's decided that that's the best tactical place for them there behind his Macedonian ally. Now remember, these Macedonian pikes are very difficult for Roman infantry to fight down. Yes, we're going to throw loads of pilers into those pikes there. But remember, those pikes are 121-man units. So um, it's going to take a lot of pikes to really damage them before we get into hand-to-hand -hand fighting. But remember, those pikes only got gold shield, gold attack on them. So it'd be interesting to see how Pompey handles them. There you can see Fesson's rallied infantry there in behind the Macedonian pikes. But what's really worrying me is that Germanic army of 12 fully upgraded, effective against armor axemen there. Fresh as well, I'm guessing. Fresh or warmed up. And they are ready to attack. Now, make no mistake, I've seen um, this type of army in action before. This can be a battle-winning army. If uh, Man 2 times it just right and hits the target just right, he could rout loads of our troops. And look, he's got his cavalry in behind us as well. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, you know, there could be a hammer and anvil attack on the cards here if we're not careful. We're going to need to be very, very um, mindful of that Germanic army. And bearing in mind, none of those Axemen have been um, in combat yet. So there are four units, four fresh units. Here's Fesson Lut being very aggressive again, attacking with his infantry. And I'm waiting here for Barkley Man to start using his Carthaginians on the Macedonians here. Remember, yes, the Macedonians have got long pikes against the short spears of the Carthaginians. But remember, those Carthaginian sacred uh, band units have got very good specifications that enables them to punch above their weight when they fight these big 121-man units. But as I say, this Germanic army here of 12 fully upgraded effective against armor axemen that could, uh, you know, that could potentially be a devastating attack by them, especially as he's got his cavalry in behind us as well. There you are, you can see Fesson attacking now with his infantry. And here you'll see that Schemer has brought part of his infantry here, one of his mini armies, half of his army here, round this particular flank. But he needs to be careful there because there's a lot of enemy cavalry and that those Germanic axemen that could well want to hit him. So I think Schemer moving away from that flank is a good move for him. Here you can see um, Pompey being very aggressive with his Macedonian pikes. You'll know that most Macedonian general goes into defense mode because um, the defense specifications of Mastodon's very good there, but you can see that um, Pompey is attacking with his Macedonian troops. As I say, he's very good with Macedon, is Pompey. Right, you can see here these Red Julio troops still attacking my Brutio troops there. We've just routed Fesson General for a second time, so I think most of Fesson's infantry has now been taken out. Once again, you'll see um, Pompey moving his Macedonian pikes forward there. 
And as I say, it's very difficult for Roman troops to fight down the length of those Macedonian pikes to kill the man on the other end right. Let's just pause the game for a second here. Now, this is quite alarming. Can you see that man two has put his cavalry in wedge formation now? And that's a sign that he's got his finger on the trigger and he is ready to attack with his cavalry. You can see here Barclay man is anticipating that and taking three of his um, spear units over there to try and neutralize that cavalry. But um, as I say, we need to watch that cavalry very, very closely there. And as I say, those Germanic axemen, they could be battle-winning troops. Okay, watch out for those axemen when Man 2 decides to charge them in. Just watch the, uh, the effect that they can have. Okay, as I say, the Macedonian pikes are holding really well there in a defensive posture. But as I say, every now and again, Pompey will move them forward where he sees a target that he thinks he can hit with his Macedonian pikes. As I say here, you can see Canary has still got some of his units fighting Scorpion King's SBQR troops. Okay, and we've got a couple of Carthage uh, spear units coming up there as well. But if those Carthage spear units are not connected together, their flanks could be exposed to Axeman attack. Right, here we go then. Here's Man 2 coming in with those fully upgraded effective against armor axemen and just look at the impact bang as they charge in there oh my gosh oh my gosh right so the, the spear as we know spear and pikes kill um barbarian troops quite quickly but if the spear or pike units get surrounded or their flanks exposed to attack then these guys um these germanic troops here will kill them quite quickly because they're getting in around the flank if you notice in front of the spear units the spear units are holding them off but the uh, germanic troops are getting around their flanks and other germanic troops that are attacking our um troops there bearing in mind that we've probably thrown most of our pilers in you know we've thrown most of our pilers before this part of the battle here so we're not going to damage these uh, units with pilers because as I say we've probably mostly thrown our pilers already so it's just hand-to-hand -hand fighting our Roman troops against these effective against armor axemen and as I say uh, man two's got 12 of them and uh, they can absolutely devastate us here with those axemen and as I say um, Rome uh, relies on throwing missiles into enemy troops before they fight them but as I say I think probably we've thrown all our pilers um, before at this stage of the battle. Here I can see our Roman troops are just look at those effective against armor axemen, how they just smash down Roman infantry there. Bang! Look at that! I think that one axeman just chopped down three Roman troops, and then the Germanic cavalry charging that was behind us, like a bang! And he turned, oh my gosh, Scorpion King's general's just been routed. Look at that Germanic cavalry in behind us there. So let's say Scorpion King's general's been routed, hammer and anvil attack, look. The axemen were the anvil and the cavalry were the hammer there. And you can see that Germanic cavalry ready to charge in behind us as well. Oh my gosh. And those uh, other axemen there making it inroads into our infantry. And over here you'll see that looks like another hammer and anvil attack here. Pompey's pikes are going to be the anvil and Pompey's well upgraded cavalry are going to be the hammer. If you notice here, Schemer can see the danger. He's actually faced troops against those Macedonian cavalry, but I think Pomp is still gonna charge down because he's getting a downhill charge bonus as well. Oh my gosh, a nine charge bonus with his cavalry, well upgraded cavalry as well, like a bang, as he smashes into Schemer's general, looking to take out Schemer's general there, as he moves his pikes forward there. Oh my gosh, that Scorpion King's general just been taken out by those axemen, so, Oh my gosh, a hammer and anvil attack there by Pompey with his pikes and his companion cavalry. Could take out that, uh, that small army of schemers there. Meanwhile, those effective against armor axemen in co coordination with those cavalry there have taken out a heck of a lot of Scorpion King's infantry there. Oh my gosh. So things not looking very good for us here. You've got Canary's got a couple of cavalry units in behind us as well that he could move in to the battle here. But uh, it looks to me like a heck of a lot of Scorpion King's army has been taken out there by those Germanic troops. Oh, oh that's, uh, I think that's um, Schemer's general has just been taken out. Can you see my Brutii troops there fighting those effective against armor axemen there? My troops were already, already battle depleted. But here, oh my gosh, all that, that little mini army, there were half 
of Schemer's army there that he made into a mini army has now been taken out. And you can see our Carthage alloy moving into the Macedonians. Here, remember, my army is the Green the Brutal army. And can you can see all those effective against armor Germanic axemen attacking my Brutio army there. Oh my gosh. Things not looking very good here for us, I don't think. You can see Scorpion King's got a couple of his units there, but they're exposed to cavalry and axemen hit out on that flank. So, um, as I say, make no mistake, this battle is going to go right down to the wire here. You can see several of my Brutio units have now already been taken out. I see a lot of my troops dead on the battlefield there, killed by those axemen. You can see that uh, Scorpion King's brought some of his units forward there. Um, what he's got left there to help fight the Axemen, but um, oh my god, and those two um, units of Scorpion King we looked at were on the flank have just been taken out by a combination of cavalry and Axemen there. So as you can see, our left flank really, for all intents and purposes, and our left centre is in a very, very broken um, situation there, I think, and that Germanic cavalry is just ready to charge in and finish us off. So basically here we've just got the Carthaginian sacred band units of Barclay Man here fighting against the Macedonian pikes here. And make no mistake, that is a heck of a scrap going on there between those, the long pikes of Macedon and the short spears of the sacred band troops there. Oh my gosh, and because, oh, my infantry has been absolutely decimated. It looks to me like I just got three units left. Those effective against armor axemen just absolutely smashed my infantry there. Oh my gosh. So as I say, those 12 units of effective against armor axemen that Man Tzu's bought has really like kind of turned the battle around because I think before those Germanic troops attacked, you know, it looked like uh, we were winning this because we'd taken out most of Fessens and um, Canary's army here. Right, so that, it looks to me like I've just got two, is it two units, maybe three? Well, two and a bit units left. Also, that's six men left in that unit, so that's all I've got left. The rest of my um, infantry there, you can see a big clump of green infantry, were taken out by those effective against armor axemen. So my, my arm has been absolutely decimated there. So here, as I say, you can see, um, I think it's Schemer's blue Scipio troops. He's got a few battle damage units left. And our Carthaginian ally there, Barclay Man, doing the best they can against these Macedonian pikes. And it looks to me like um, Pomp is looking to hold um, our troops here um, while the rest of his allies are taking out the rest of our troops on the other flank there. But as you can see, things not looking very good for us there. Pompey still got um, some battle damaged cavalry left with those fantastic upgrades. I can see some red Julii cavalry behind us loitering with intent. Right, can you see here my unit? So that's all I've got left. One reasonable unit and two very battle damaged units. Now this game was played about two months ago, so I can't remember the tactics, but I need to be very careful here because if that uh, Macedonian cavalry smashes into me, that could be problematic. And also, you've got this Germanic cavalry here that could also smash into me with a downhill bonus as well. So um, it looks to me like um, what I've got left there could well be hit. As I say, it, I, as this battle was fought two months ago, so the only thing I'm thinking is I'm moving some infantry to look to get onto the flank of those Macedonian pikemen there. But uh, I think I'm going to get hit by cavalry just looking at those um, cavalry, uh, oh my gosh, here comes the Germanic cavalry with a downhill um, advantage there, and they're going to smash into my troops, ah, bang, oh my gosh, I was expecting my troops to rout on impact, oh my gosh, and here comes the Macedonian cavalry in behind me, and bang, as they smash in behind me, I can't believe those three battle damage units are still holding, look, they're still holding, even now, oh my gosh, I don't think they're going to hold, no, the general's been taken out, that's it then. So, oh my god, they were killed to a man, look. None of them even escaped. All three of my, the last of my battle um, units there, my army there, has now been taken out. So, um, it's, it looks to me like it's just Schemer and Barclay Man left for our team. I think all of Scorpion King's units have been taken out, and all of my units have now been taken out. 
You can see the enemy have still got a lot of cavalry out there. Yeah, there's my green. Those units just got smashed by that uh, to cavalry sandwich attack there. Uh, yeah, that was a sandwich attack, wasn't it? Macedonian cavalry on one side and Germanic cavalry on the other. A real sandwich attack there took my units out. You can see them tactically moving their cavalry units in behind us there. You can still see these, um, okay, they're very battle damaged, but you've still got effective against armor axemen there to bring into the fray. There, you can see that um, Macedonian cavalry looking to smash in there. Look, ah, bang, as they charge in there. Oh my gosh. Looking to take out, I think, Schemer's uh, troops there is what he's looking to do with that uh, that cavalry. And you've got that Germanic cavalry of mounted. There's a couple of Julio units looking back. Those cavalry units smashed into the back of Barclay Man's units there. See Barclay Man charging one of his cavalry units in there as well. Make no mistake, this battle's going to go right down to the wire here. Anywhere you can see that companion cavalry with their really great upgrades on. Fighting sword. Oh, oh that's our Carthage general just been taken out, I think. Anywhere you can see sword on sword battle going on there, but the Carthaginian cav I'm sorry, the Macedonian cavalry lost. Okay, here comes the Germanic cavalry. Look up. Bang! But I think they're exhausted. Yeah, that Germanic cavalry is exhausted. So their battle proficiency, their charge bonus, everything would have dropped off the edge of a cliff there. Remember, you try not to fight troops tired, very tired, and especially not exhausted. But that's all that Mansu could do at that stage of the battle. There goes Schemer's general has just been routed there. Oh my gosh. But it looks to me like Barclay Man's Carthaginian troops here may have saved the day for us. There's a couple of schemers very battle damaged units left there as well two or three of his units left there and just one macedonian unit left there of pompey's and we've managed to route that so there you go it looks like our team has just about managed to go on to win the battle here goes man two here comes man two's exhausted cavalry from one last cavalry charge there like a bang ran straight into those waiting spears there with a sacred band unit. Do you see that sacred band unit glow there? I've got a battlefield promotion. Right, so that's all the troops that we've got left. Oh my gosh. So I think Schemer has got maybe four units, but they are extremely battle damaged units left. That's all he's got left. If you look at the numbers there, look, 23. That seems a lot, 23, doesn't it? And what's that, 13 in that one? There's a 13, and yeah, I mean, he's already got any troops left at all there. Um, he's got one more unit over there with six men in, in the woods that's rallied in the woods there. But just look at the battlefield here. I mean, it was very, very intense. Barkley Man still got quite a few of his sacred band units left, so well done to him there. But just look at the battlefield here. If we go all the way over to what was our left flank there, you can see... That was quite intense fighting on our left flank. Remember, our left flank and left center basically got broken by enemy troops, mostly those effective against armor axe units. Just look at the dead here as we move across the battlefield here. Oh my gosh. You can see the dead there. Of course, the red cloaked, um, sorry, the, the Germanic troops with their red trousers, they really um, show up on the battlefield, don't they? As we move across the battlefield there, I can see a lot of my green Brutioi troops were killed there. Over here, look, oh my gosh, look at this. Massive cavalry, it's like a massive cavalry on cavalry battle happened there, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. If we just look across the battlefield there. You can see just how intense the fighting was there. Over here as well. If we look here, just look at the red Julioi cavalry there. You can see he must have got hit really hard there as we move up. And as I say, well done to Barkerman. Another look, looks like a cavalry encounter here on this part of the hill or a slope, whatever you would like to call it there. So, um, they were, as I say, our team has managed to go on to win the battle there. And as I say, all of Scorpion King's units and all of my units were taken out, completely destroyed. Um, Schemer's got a few very battle damaged units left 
and Barkley Man did well with his Carthaginian era. OK, the first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. I thought everybody played well there. And this is a very unusual battle. You can see it's a close battle, but there's something very unusual that I wanted to show you. This is one of the reasons I want to show you this battle. Can you see here that in the losing team, Man 2 got the highest kills with his Germanic army. Remember his 12 fully upgraded um, effective against armor chosen axemen there? Look at the kills that he got. Really not too far off of 2,000 there. So he got the highest kills there. And then Pompey got the second highest kills. So the losing team had the first and second highest kills in the whole battle. How rare is that? Very, very rare to have them there. So well done to Man 2. Highest kills in the game with his Germanic army. Uh, really well done. Well done to Fesson. He'll be disappointed he got less than a 1,000 kills, but he was very aggressive with his army, wasn't he? Very attacking. Well done to Canary. Got good kills there with his army. And as I say, well done to Pompey. Second highest kills in the game with his Macedonian army. So really well played, guys. Really good uh, good kills. Uh, my kills, um, well, maybe average. Not too bad. Not too good. But uh, maybe about average there. Um, and well done to Schemer, very, very aggressive there, got some really good kills with his army. I think he got the third highest kills in the game there, so well done to him. Well done to Barkley Man, got some really good kills with his Carthaginians, so well done to him, he did really well. And well done to Scorpion King as well, got some good kills with his um, army, so really well played, guys. Um, and do you think there was a faction advantage anywhere? They've got Germania, Rome, Rome. And Macedon there. That's quite a good combination. I think that worked out quite well. And as you can see, Germania and Macedon got the first and second highest kills in the whole game. So really well done to them. And then we've got uh, Rome, Rome, Carthage and Rome, which is quite a good combination as well. So I guess the teams were quite even there. Uh, we play Rome Total War every Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you'd like to join us, it would be great to see you. Um, please come and join us. Look forward to seeing you soon. And bye for now.